Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing our channel as we are going to complete each and every aspect related to geography. Now in today's session on population geography, we are going to learn about the contemporary issues and challenges related to population across the world. For example, the aging of population, the declining sex ratio, the international migration and other problems as well. But before we go ahead, please like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share the videos with others as well. So now, let's discuss the various contemporary issues related to population across the world. For example, aging of population, declining sex ratio, HIV AIDS and several others that we are going to do in this particular lecture. So let's begin with the global population trends itself and observe for ourselves that where is the population heading? What is this population explosion that we keep talking about? In the previous lectures in the beginning in population geography, we addressed several such issues as well. So now, if you look into this estimated and projected population of the world, there is a very interesting insight here. From 1900 to 2050, this gives us a huge exponential growth of population. It means by 2050 and above, we are going to cross more than almost 10.9 billion population of the world. What does it say for itself? It says that the world is going to be more peopled, more population is going to be there. It means what will happen? It means the associated aspects of the population are also going to change significantly. That's where the word issues come in, the challenges come into the picture with population, right? So as population grows, it means the need for sustenance, the need for resources will grow multifolds as well. It means population and resource relationship is going to be strained. It means we are going to be under strain, under stress, that is what we are looking here. So let's observe few more points and understand that population growth and supply of renewable resources is one of the core aspects where we are talking about the contemporary challenges in population, right? So population and water is going to be the most prime concern because water is a lifeline to people. Right? So what happens? The water supply situation was also defined by Swedish hydrologist Malin Flackenmark as three different states. What is this? Adequate water state, water stress and water scarcity. So the world is moving from adequacy towards the scarcity. That is where the transition comes with population, right? That's why we say population resource relationship. So as population grows, we are going from adequate water stage to water stress and to water scarcity. So what you observe here? In many portions of the world, like several African countries and many other places on our planet, already we are in the water scarcity stage. In some places we are into water stress and some places still we are in adequate stage, but in future we are going into the stress and water scarcity. Right. So it's possible that there are such a water scarcity state could restrict the economic development as well. Right. So what you observe the most populous countries in the world, India and China. Currently, we see them as adequate water state, but it's not going to remain. So that is the projection. That's where contemporary challenges lie. Right. So India will be in a state of water stress and China will approach the water stress as well in next 50 years. That is the projection. So we are looking at a stress situation, a scarce situation. Right. That's the grim reality with population and water resources. Similarly, if you observe population and food, which was primarily talked in Malthusian theory of population. So if you have not watched the Malthus theory of population, please go to the playlist and you can watch it in details there. So we are talking about population and its food requirements. How much is the carrying capacity of the planet? How much population would get food in a convenient manner? Right. So that is a big question. So food is going to be again something which is going to be talked in terms of security and insecurity around the world. Sustainable development goals talks about zero hunger, zero poverty and several such issues. Right. So per capita food production growth rates in sub-Saharan Africa as well as South Asian countries are already sluggish. That is the data. 
right so at present 30 percent of the population in sub-saharan africa and 20 percent in south asia are already suffering from malnutrition if you have observed the recent hunger index as well you can observe the recent report on hunger index you'll find the ranks of the countries right so what's happening as in India, we also have slipped in ranks in hunger index as well. We need to improve. So what is important here? The food security and the question with population. That's a very important challenge. So what do you find? Most of the countries in these regions are dealing with great number of problems, right? Great number of problems related to the food production and also distribution. So the 3A concept comes into the picture. Right? What is this 3A concept? One is the availability, then there is something called affordability, and then we'll have accessibility. Right? So availability, affordability, and accessibility are three A's, which is important for food security. So difficulty increasing in cultivable land areas, which are being reduced now, diminishing family farm area, then shrinking in area of farmland due to soil depletion, right? Then water scarcity, already we talked about it, and then contamination, ineffective irrigation methods, and water storage and shipping food problem. So several challenges are already there where we see that food is not reaching where it needs to reach. Even if it is available, it is not accessible. Even if it is accessible, it's not affordable for many sections. So poverty and food, both of them combined together with population has to be looked into the picture, right? Then what we see is population and environment. So if you observe here, population and environment is very commonly talked theme in today's world, right? What is happening? Because population is growing and the stress is increasing on environment because of population. So what is happening? Pollution and so many other factors, right? So biggest problem is what we are looking here is the global warming and global climate change, right? So destruction of forests, decreasing in biodiversity, desertification, contamination of oceans, destruction of ozone layer and several problems that is resultant because of the human pressures. Anthropogenic problems that we say, right? So what do you observe? Developing countries, especially which are in the process of development, they are also having more population if you observe the trend. Right. So this demographic transition is very important to understand here that if we are not stabilizing in terms of growth of population, the pressures on environment is going to increase day by day, especially in developing countries and third world countries. Right. So stable water and food supply is important and promoting social harmony and social development as well. And also contribution to the global environmental problems is a big challenge in these countries. Right. So you can observe a common picture of developing countries where you'll find these chimneys and these pollutions and solid solid waste management as coming big issues in urban areas, especially in developing countries, right? Then what you observe that what is the pattern of aging population in developed and developing country? This we have already talked in the previous lectures in population geography as well. So you find that developed countries are having higher population, which is aging while developing countries are also growing in numbers gradually. So average line is somewhere here of the world. It means what? The world is slowly going towards aging population and which is not a good indicator. Why is it not a good indicator? Because if aging problems are there, it means workforce problem will be there, dependent population would be there, more investment in medical health infrastructure would be needed and stagnancy in economic development is going to be there in long run because that is a dependent population. So Working population, if it is declining, it is a bad sign for the developing world as well as developed world, right? So it needs to be managed properly, right? Then what you observe is the declining sex ratio. Now declining sex ratio is directly connected to fertility factors, right? So average sex ratio for human population of the world was found to be 101 males for 100 females, right? But it varies from 74 to 219. It means the average value is 101, but the extreme values even go to 219 males per 100 females to 74 males per females, right? So what you observe, 71 countries of the total population of males is greater than females, right? And 132 are where you'll find females are the higher in number, right? And only 24 countries of the world are having a balanced sex ratio. It means there is a larger part where sex ratio is imbalanced. And when sex ratio is imbalanced, it means what? It means that there are several factors that we need to consider. For example, natural incidents, war casualties, then gender control and deliberate gender side. We say genocide, it's gender side. It means a particular gender is losing life. 
right? So what we observe here, decline of female population may have various socio-political as well and demographic consequences as well. For example, a proportion of male population will remain unmarried. And also in long run, what will happen? There will lead to strong competition among the mates, right? So what will happen? The fallback is prostitution, human trafficking and several other social problems rising out of this. So the criminal cases of rape, murder may increase. This is a possibility, right? And there are several other possibilities of crime against women and several others. Then what we find that at the same time, the declining population of females will be a natural mechanism for population control. That could also be seen here, right? As the less number of wombs would be available for reproduction, right? So this is another change that we observe in future. Right. So declining sex ratio would lead to the transition of population very sharply in particular areas of the world. So we need to make it more balanced. Then further what we observe is the population and HIV AIDS relationship. This is related to disease. So what you observe HIV AIDS is a major concern, not just from the perspective of reproductive health, right, in valuing individual health and human rights, but also very important development indicator development standpoint in terms of its role in diminishing labor force. So if you observe economic development in terms of labor force, remember any such fatal disease or syndrome is going to be a problem, right? So what you observe here further that this is a result of the fact that most people living with AIDS are in their reproductive years, 15 to 49 years of age, right? And since most of them are infected and their death is the thing, it means what will happen? The decrease in reproductive population greatly distorts the demography of the world. So demographic pyramid, population pyramid is going to be changed, right? And if you look here in this particular map of the world, the concentration in African countries and also the South Asian countries, Southeast Asia is too much. So most of these countries are going to face these problems related to the disease, right? Then further, if you observe, it is predicted that countries in which one third to one quarter of the population of specially reproductive age is HIV positive will see a dramatic change, a dramatic reduction in this age group. And in near future, they'll have demographic problems. Right. So this is a major area of concern as well. Then further, if you observe the migration patterns, international migrations and also increasing urbanization, as we have talked in several theories and also in many other lectures before this lecture, that urban areas city is going to have a multiplier effect and it's going to be an attraction point. It's going to be a centrifugal force, which is going to attract people from all around to the city. So more and more urbanization is going to take place. Why? Because of more opportunities in urban areas, right? So international migration is an inevitable consequence of the globalization as we are seeing. And cities are likely to play a key role in international migration as well as the local migration within the country migration as well, right? So what you observe? The attractive destinations because of their diversified economy is what is going to pull the people towards city. But what about that? If people are being pulled towards the city, what's going to happen? This is what we are looking into. The growth of slum areas and uncontrolled migration and urbanization relating to the various aspects, which is the fallout of the developmental pressures. So we see the problems on environment. Urban environment is going to be deteriorated. Problems of housing and several other problems that is listed here. Growth in slums, pavement settlements, squatter settlements, pollution, health hazard and crime. This is very common in urban areas across the world. This is a fallout of overpopulation and more concentration in urban areas. And this is what we are looking into the world picture now. So what you observe here is that these are several issues and challenges which are commonly available all across the world. Just that developing and developed have a different character and management and also the resources available that is per capita resources, per capita income and those standards vary. So the management also changes, but the problem is there for the entire world that we need to look into the picture, right? If developing countries are having problems, it is eventually going to percolate to developed world as well. If developed is having a problem, eventually it's going to percolate to the developing countries. The world is heavily networked now. It's heavily connected now. So nothing is there in isolation, right? So if there is a population pressure on resources and also on environment, also on people and the process, it means every one of us is going to get affected eventually for any reason. And pandemic today is the best example that you see for this population here, right? So right now we are facing this pandemic and a lot of challenges are there in terms of the disease control and also the health as well as the carrying capacity of different areas in the 
world where how many people are there and what is the resource right so too much of population pressure is going to be there in future as well so better management today is going to give us better future tomorrow that's very important to understand so now when we have discussed the various issues and challenges related to the contemporary world in today's times and population geography in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on different other aspects of geography as well so if you have not watched the entire playlist, please go to the playlist section and you can see for yourself that there are many playlists related to geography where you can see population geography, economic geography and several other aspects as well. So please check that section and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos and content with others as well.